Um, goed, we gaan het hebben over e-books en over disruption. Uh, de e-bookmarkt is namelijk een markt die anders moet, vinden wij. En daar hebben we hulp bij nodig en daarom is dit een challenge. Dus we gaan kijken of we jullie uh, zo enthousiast kunnen krijgen dat jullie ons de rest van de dag gaan helpen om die e-bookmarkt om te gooien. Niet, niet de producten veranderen, maar zorgen dat ze voornamelijk goedkoper worden. Um, ik, um, voor heel veel mensen zijn, zeker voor heel veel mensen hier, overigens van harte welkom, fijn dat jullie er zijn. Voor heel veel mensen hier zijn boeken niet echt een sexy onderwerp, denk ik. Maar uh, daar is eigenlijk een, een rare misvatting in, want boeken zijn razend belangrijk. Boeken zijn al uh, sinds ze bestaan de belangrijkste overbrenger van ideeën. Uh, de belangrijkste drager van uh, informatie. En uh, in feite de garantie voor verandering, voor vrijheid, voor democratie en voor... Ja, huh? Er begint iemand doorheen te praten. Nou ja, uh, voor alles eigenlijk waar we waarde aan hechten. Dat is natuurlijk aan het veranderen sinds we uh, digitale media hebben. Daar is iets aan het veranderen. We zijn aan het verdwijnen van de drukpers en we zijn bezig... Uh, ons te richten uh, op internet. Dat maakt het product anders, dat maakt de verspreiding van het product anders, dat maakt ook het verdienmodel heel anders. Nou, om dat verdienmodel uh, goed te krijgen, want dat is nu niet goed, uh, hebben wij een challenge bedacht. Daar ga ik jullie straks over vertellen. Ik ga eerst een wat langere inleiding houden over uh, wat Boenda is. Hè. Boenda is... Uh, het bedrijf dat, dat uh, zich hier presenteert. En Matthijs en Irene en ik zijn daar uh, uh, oprichters van. Um, en ik zal beginnen met mezelf even voor te stellen, want zo hoort het eigenlijk. Mijn naam is Gert Jan de Vries en ik ben schrijver. En schrijver is uh, het op één na oudste beroep ter wereld. Wat het oudste beroep is, dat weten jullie. Uh, schrijver is het op één na oudste beroep. Schrijvers, hebben, uh, uh, schrijvers zijn... Uh, uh, in elk geval de oudste uh, beroepsgroep in de historie. Ze hebben namelijk de historie uitgevonden. Voordat er schrijvers waren, was er prehistorie. Schrijvers hebben de geschiedenis bedacht. En sindsdien hebben ze hem ook vormgegeven. Nou, um, ik ben naast, uitgever ook, of, uh, naast schrijver ook uitgever. En een uitgever is een veel jonger vak. Schrijvers zijn er door alle eeuwen heen. En eigenlijk spreken we vanaf het jaar... Dat is nou vanaf 3000 jaar geleden ongeveer over een West-Europese literatuur, dus over echt geschreven cultuur. Uitgevers bestaan er pas 500 jaar, namelijk sinds de uitvinding van de drukpers. De uitvinding van de drukpers is cruciaal voor het boekenvak. Um, wat ging ik daar verder over vertellen? Oh ja, uh, dat boekenvak heeft zich verder gevormd. Je hebt natuurlijk de schrijver en de lezer. Maar daartussenin zitten dus nog twee anderen, de drukker en de uitgever. En die drukker en de uitgever, die zijn heel erg van positie veranderd sinds we digitale media hebben. De schrijver en de lezer doen nog steeds hetzelfde. Maar de uitgever en de drukker, de drukker is in feite overbodig geworden. Uh, de uitgever uh, is anders gaan opereren. Die is zich gaan bemoeien met de digitale markt. En het, het gekke is dat hij op de digitale markt eigenlijk exact hetzelfde doet als in de papieren markt. Ook met dezelfde prijsstellingen. Dus waar een papieren boek uh, een, een bepaalde prijs heeft, uh, die wordt gerechtvaardigd doordat er winkels zijn met winkelpersoneel, met een pacht en noem maar op. Zie je op de digitale markt uh, ja, dat al dat soort kosten er niet zijn bij het verkopen van e-boeken. Maar... De e-book reseller krijgt dezelfde marge. Hè, dus die verdient uh, procentueel net zoveel aan een e-book als een papierenwinkel aan een papierenboek. En daar zit iets heel erg scheef. Dat gaat namelijk ten koste van de auteur. En die auteur moet ervan leven. Nou, voordat ik verder ga wil ik eigenlijk even uh, een paar uh, dingetjes door jullie laten beantwoorden. Dat is... Uh, we hebben een, een klein gadget ingebouwd in deze website. En even kijken, ben ik er nog? Ja. Um, de, we hebben drie vragen en die kunnen jullie uh, via je mobiel beantwoorden. Het is misschien een beetje overdreven in dit geval, maar laten we het toch doen. 
Hi there. Are you English speaking? Yes or Dutch? Sorry? Ik versta je niet. I don't understand. You're English. Okay. Then I, I was talking Dutch until now, so I'll go on in English. Um, we have a we have a little gizmo here. Um, if you can uh, go to live.foxvote.com, you can join us here in answering a few questions. It's anonymous. That doesn't mean a lot when there's only four people in the audience, but it's still anonymous. So our first question is, do you read e-books? No, 100%. There's only one. <laughs> Two. Wow. <laughs> okay, any more? Yeah, wow. On an ebook reader. Okay, that's interesting. So most people who read on an ebook reader uh, buy their ebooks online at Amazon or uh, Kobo or one of the others. Uh, those are, of course, our competitors. Uh, but in other words, we are their competitors. And they have multi million companies, uh, and we are four people who all have a job and do this in our spare time. So we have one meeting by Skype once a week. And for the rest, I think the four of us put in maybe one day a week's work. And thereby, we can compete with Apple, Kobo, Amazon, etc. That goes to show that the ebook market is a very simple thing. If we can do it by four with four people, why have such big companies? And why put so much money into these companies from the earnings of these ebooks? Ebooks can be much cheaper as long as these big companies don't take such a big cut. As I explained a little earlier, uh, the, uh, the big companies, the, the, the ebook sellers, get the same cut that uh, stone bookstores get from selling, e selling paper books. So somewhere in the transition from printed press to digital press, something went wrong, and we're trying to fix that. That's in fact, that's the whole story. Ah, yeah, do you that further? Ik vergeet het. So in the Netherlands, the price of e-books is relatively high. Uh, we have a next question for you, and that's uh, what do you consider a decent price for an ebook? So if, if you go back to the, uh, the, the gizmo, you can put in your price. What's a decent price for an ebook? Afterwards, I will tell you what is the common price right now. What I can tell you already is that. Uh, at the start, uh, about 15 years ago, ebooks were about 80% of the paper book price. Uh, this dropped steadily, and we're now somewhere in the region of 60% of the paper book price, which is still uh, way too high, I think. So, until now, 5 to 10 euros is a decent price, okay? Ah, look at this. Okay. Two to five, five to ten. Um, right now, the average price of ebooks sold in the Netherlands, I'm only talking about the Netherlands, uh, sold in the Netherlands is uh, 889. 
so it's uh, it's on the high part of what you all expect, and we think that a decent price should be five euros or less. That's better for uh, uh, to to keep pirates away. So there, uh, one only one out of ten e-books that people read has been bought. Nine others are ripped. So we think if the prices go down, there's no more ripping or there's less ripping, which will make uh, the complete profit higher, even with lower prices. So I think we can do much better than right now with all these high prices. The reason there's these high prices is that uh, books, uh, the publishers don't want ebooks to compete with their paper books. They want ebooks uh, out of the way, in fact. They, they, uh, they were not very enthusiastically uh, received, the ebooks. Publishers, in fact, still want printed press and still want to have paper books. So the ebook was first denied. There's never going to be a market for that. And now that it's there, they try to, uh, the publishers try to keep prices as high as possible to uh, avoid cannibalism from their paper books. So it's in the interest of the publisher. It's also in the interest of the retailer because, of course, the higher the price, the more he gets. And now they, they have formed some sort of cartel in which the, uh, the big companies like Apple and Amazon are dictating publishers to give them the lowest price in the market. Well, if they can sell for the lowest price, nobody can go under that low price, okay? Still, that's quite unfair because uh, in an open economy, you shouldn't be making these kinds of deals. So that's where we come in. That's what we want to change. Right now, we are selling on average 10% uh, below this price. And of course, Amazon and Apple and the others are being alarmed. So they are alarmed. They go to the publishers and they tell the publishers to cut us off. So they won't distribute to by, uh, via us anymore. Well, they are threatening us. One has left already. Others are threatening us and are forcing us into a kind of relationship where we have to pay where we have to ask the same price from our customers. Although we are below uh, customer prices that are common, we still pay the same amount to publishers and authors, so they are better off with us, or at least as good. Now, the main source of e-books for us comes from uh, a place called the e-book house, which is a dis distributional channel from uh, owned by publishers and resellers. Um, they have uh, something like uh, 30, 35,000 books, and we sell them just like everybody else. So in that way, there's no difference between us and the others. Only our price is different, and what we offer uh, authors is that authors can upload their ebooks to us uh, without a publisher. If they do so, they get 90% of the uh, of the retail price. So instead of getting 10% what they get from their publisher, we take 10% from them. So they they keep 90%. So they're far better off with us. Um, Okay, now, uh, the situation right now is, is this. Uh, we think this disruptive model of ours uh, should be the winner in the end. We think that to keep the book, the e-book, alive, and thereby uh, all, the, uh, all the great things it brings us, like uh, information, and in the end, democracy and freedom, we think we should take these prices down 
we should we think our model needs to be uh, spread around the whole world in fact we started small we started with only the four of us in this country but if we succeed we will go abroad um, right now we're facing losses because in fact the only thing we have to pay for is this ebook house where we get our books um, so we have to pay for that and we don't earn back what we pay if we grow just a little bit more we will break even and why not grow a lot more I think we should and I think we can now to do so we need something extra and that's where you come in so we need people to give us an idea how we can expand fast right now um, we ha don't have the money for a marketing campaign because we are this small so we're, we're not like Amazon we're, we're not like the others who can spend millions of dollars or euros on management on, on uh, marketing campaigns so we start small with smart solutions what we would like you to do is think of anything to increase our sales and in fact we have uh, a few propositions we have a few ideas how to do it and we can talk about them in uh, a workshop w which will start as soon as I st stop talking um, so we have some ideas we hope you can help us and uh, what we are uh, handing out as a price is I think very generous uh, if you are able to uh, raise our profits in the next month so in the month of June then we will uh, quadruple this amount and pay it to you so that's for profits so if our uh, we, we take 10% of everything that's basically our model so if we if our um, uh, total sales go up say 5,000 euros we grow 500 euros in profit and we'll pay that to you times four so there's a lot of cash involved if your plan works and whatever your plan may be this this could be a social media campaign this could be uh, an app for uh, people on holiday to to buy books or to to upload stories or whatever everything's okay but we'll talk about that in the workshop um, I thought we had one more question ah it's about writers income um, do you have any clue what a writer earns in in this country uh, uh, this country the Netherlands here we speak Dutch which w which is also spoken in Flanders in the half of Belgium in total there's about 20 million people speaking one language so make a guess how many books are being sold uh, I'm not going to, to tell you there's a lot of writers what are they making on one book so it's no monthly income it's no yearly income it's, it's just what they earn on one book on average Five to twenty? Five? Okay. Well, there's only one person right. <laughs> um, on average, it's about 3,500 euros. On average. And, and if you consider the fact that there are some authors who make millions, you can guess that most of them never get to this average so they stay far below this three and a half thousand euros I think one or two is quite normal uh, this is of course uh, this has worsened during the last years because uh, of the all the bad uh, ways that ebooks are being sold they're not only sold they're also rented rented out which is a very funny thing because in fa renting a book is something new renting an ebook is even newer 
and for every rented ebook, an author gets one to five cents. Now, imagine 100,000 people reading your book, and you get one cent per person. Then you have 1,000 euros, and you've been working all year for that. That's, in that's a crazy situation. I think it's not only crazy, I think it's bad, and I think it's dangerous. I think we should do something about that. And I think we can do something about that by bringing in our model, which is profitable for authors and which is cheaper for consumers. So everybody profits, except, of course, the people we compete with. So this is, uh, this is the challenge. This is the idea. Uh, we have uh, until three to talk about this idea uh, in a workshop. So you're very much invited to join us in the workshop.